Welcome to rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy. This is part 5, examining and working on the safety valve, straightening the crankshaft in the lathe and cleaning up some of the parts now the paint has gone. This is the safety valve from the engine and there is definitely something wrong with it. It just doesn't look right. There's no room for a spring and it cannot possibly work. Modern technology is very useful. I just typed Bernac Vulcan into Google and I was rewarded not only with a lot of images of Bernac Vulcan steam engines but a few videos. What became very obvious by looking at all these images of Bernac Vulcan steam engines was that a few of them were using Mamod safety valves. The screw thread on this safety valve and on Mamod safety valves is quarter BSF. And just in case you may be interested, quarter BSF is 26 threads per inch. Here I'm dismantling the safety valve to have a look at it, and the centre part is a bit beaten up. I'm just having a play with this safety valve, I think I'll make a new one. But first I'm going to play about with this one. I've cleaned the part that you've just seen, and now it looks like this, but it needs a bit more work I think. Over to my Myford ML7R lathe, and with the part in the chuck, I'm going to first of all clean it up using some wet or dry sandpaper. I'm using the sandpaper in dry mode, and as you can see, it's removing quite a lot of metal. I could of course make a new part, but I do want to retain as many original components as possible. The Red Cross shows you never to apply the sandpaper on top of the work, because if the paper tears, then your fingers could go into the chuck. After the wet or dry sandpaper, I use a piece of Scotch Brite. Once again, always pulling up from underneath because it's safer. This is the crankshaft in the lathe, and I do apologise for it being out of focus. I had to concentrate on straightening this. I am doing it entirely by eye, and in no time at all, it seems to be a good bit straighter than it was. A bit more time will be required to make it perfectly straight. Here I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite very gently on the shaft to clean it up. And once again, as you can see here, from a health and safety point of view, I'm not putting any downward pressure on the part. This is how I generally straighten small crankshafts. Rotate, bend, rotate, bend, and so on and so forth. To straighten up the crank web and clean it, I move the crank web closer to the chuck. This is a surprisingly badly machined piece of brass, and as you can see from the image, the crankshaft is not 100% true, even at the crank web end. When I was looking at the design online of Bernac Vulcan safety valves, I ended up watching a few videos on YouTube. And to be honest, I wasn't very impressed with most of the rebuilds that I saw on YouTube. Most of them had very wobbly crankshafts and sounded like pneumatic drills although some of them were polished quite nicely. Originally, I wasn't going to paint the crank web, but looking at the state of the brass, and it actually looks like a casting, it doesn't get any better after I give it the wire brush treatment. Looking on the bright side, the scratches from the wire brush will help key the paint. This bench-mounted Proxon Mini Drill is very useful, but here is a top tip. Do not run the drill too fast. This wire brush, for instance, has had quite a lot of use and hasn't really lost that many bristles. But if you run the drill at a higher speed, the bristles shoot off in all directions. By running the drill slowly, the part still gets cleaned and the bristles last a lot longer. This is a test fit of the crankshaft. As you can see, it's still slightly out. I'll do some more work on this in due course. But for now, I want to have a closer look at this safety valve. This is an exploded view of the parts, including the part on the left-hand side that is not part of the safety valve. This is the real part of the safety valve, and as you can see, the knurling is very badly damaged, more than likely by using pliers to remove it. I'm going to do one of three things, and the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to re-knurl the knurling. The knurls on my knurling tool are a bit big, and I don't think this is going to work. I held the part in the chuck by the threads, fairly gently but firmly, and I used a live centre to hold it in position, then touched the part very gently with the knurling tool. Now it looks like this. Fairly horrible and very sharp on the edges. 
The answer to this is to use a needle file on the inside edge and a full size file on the outside edge. I'm going to finish this part using some Scotch-Brite, but not by hand. I'm putting a file in between a folded piece of Scotch-Brite. This is the way to do it. I get a good finish on the work and manage to keep all of my fingers. Having said that, I'm not happy with this. I'm going to make a new part. The top part of the safety valve, which isn't part of the safety valve, is very nicely knurled, so I may modify this and effectively make a new safety valve. As you can see here, I've polished up the boiler barrel and the boiler cap and the chimney, and it's looking quite good. The cellulose thinners in the plastic tubs done its stuff and dissolved the paint on all the parts that were in there. A quick scrub with one of my bamboo toothbrushes removes the rest of it. After I completed the clean up of this side, I turned it over to do the other side. These aluminium castings, to be quite honest, are quite rough, so they're definitely going to need painting. To clean the flywheel properly, it's now in my Myford ML7R's chuck. I used a piece of Scotch-Brite to clean up the front and the outer edge. Here I'm turning the flywheel round to do the other side. And on this side I have to hold the flywheel in the chuck by the rim. To centralise it I'm using my normal method of the tailstock chuck. And by doing this the flywheel is now running as true as it can. And once again to key the part for paint I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite being very careful not to catch my hand in the chuck. It's a serious warning, be careful. I really can't stress enough that even a small lathe like a Myford could do an awful lot of damage to your fingers if you get it wrong. That's the crankshaft and flywheel done. This flywheel casting is really horrible. I don't think the aluminium that it's made from was very pure. I almost forgot, this is the piston. I left that alone, but I cleaned the piston rod. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.